Hey, what's up, guys? This is Cody, and I want to go ahead and go through some very important Bitcoin and crypto-related news that happened today. Now, as usual, I'm going to go ahead and start by recapping what happened with Bitcoin and uh, Ethereum and Binance Coin. So Bitcoin uh, is down over 3 and it looks like three quarters of a percent, very close to that, in 24 hours. Ethereum is down over 4%, and Binance Coin is down over five and three quarters of a percent. And the reason for that being so much more than Bitcoin and Ethereum will become more apparent later. So first, I'm going to go ahead and start off with the good news. So MicroStrategy recently came out with this Form 8K that they release, specifically filed with the SEC, and they've described their recent purchase of Bitcoin. So we go all the way down here, and we can see that on the 27th of March, MicroStrategy announced that during the period between February 16th and March 23rd of 2023, MicroStrategy, together with, with its subsidiaries, acquired approximately 6,455 Bitcoins for approximately $150 million in cash at a, at a Average price of approximately $23,238 per Bitcoin. Now, this is quite frankly amazing because Michael Saylor, who uh, runs the Bitcoin uh, part of MicroStrategy, has talked about their Bitcoin strategy and what exactly they're going to be doing. And so he wanted to focus more on Bitcoin and specifically adding Bitcoin to their balance sheet. So now we're seeing that they were one of the bigger whales that had been buying Bitcoin over the last month or so. And again, they bought 6, uh, 60, over 6,400 Bitcoin. And what's interesting about that is if you overlay that with the Bitcoin price, what you can see here is that they started buying about here as soon as it went up here at about 25200 And then they bought all the way down here. And then they decided most likely to buy a significant amount of Bitcoin here at about that 20000 level. We can go ahead and see based on the volume, we had pretty massive volume spikes up here, driving the price even higher from 20000 Most likely, they were buying in this region right here very heavily. So this right here, this pump up, this is most likely attributable to MicroStrategy buying the dip in Bitcoin. And the fact is, they hold together 138000 955 bitcoins. Now that is insane. They hold over 138,000 bitcoins. So that is quite possibly one of the largest wallets that I've seen so far. That is, it's gonna, they're gonna make a lot of money if bitcoin goes up. They're gonna make a ton. They're gonna make a killing. If Bitcoin even goes back to 30,000 or 40,000, they are going to make a killing on this investment. All right, so that's the good news. Now let's get to the not-so-good news. The CFTC, or the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, has charged uh, CZ, Chengpeng Zhao, and some of the entities that operate the Binance platform with violations of the Commodity Exchange Act, CEA, and CFTC regulations. Okay, so what they're charging, what the CFTC is charging them with is that they allegedly uh, chose to knowingly disregard applicable provisions of the CEA while engaging in a calculated strategy of regulatory arbitrage to the commercial benefit. So basically, they're engaging in a, a, a trading scheme in the background, utilizing the information that they know uh, in, and specifically getting the best prices on all the coins. And the um, CFTC is charging them basically with knowing information that the average investor wouldn't know. So that's that's part of the complaint that they've alleged. They've also said that uh, the complaint charges that for mo most of the relevant period, Binance did not require its customers to provide any identity verifying information before trading on the platform. And that's specifically things like KYC, know your customer. And uh, despite the legal duty that entities like Binance functioning as futures uh, commission merchants collect such information and fail to implement basic compliance procedures designed to prevent and detect terrorist financing and money laundering. So they're basically saying that they haven't they haven't done that um, identity verifying uh, procedure, identity verifying information. And as a result, they're not compliant with the CFTC's rules. Okay. And then they're also saying that even after Binance 
uh, purported to restrict U.S. customers from trading on its platform. Binance instructed its customers, in particular the commercially valuable U.S. Uh, VIP customers, on the best methods for invading for evading Binance's compliance controls. So part of this has been that they've advised uh, that, that supposedly they have advised people to start using things like VPNs in order to get around those uh, region restrictions to prevent them from trading on the Binance platform. Now, I know that specifically uh, when it comes down to trying to trade derivatives, think doing things like options and futures contracts, it's very difficult to do in the U.S. Um, and as a result, many people will use VPNs to try to get around them. So that's partially one of the reasons why the CFTC is, is uh, a- investigating them. And the reason why they have come out here with this, the civil enforcement action. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to CZ's response. Now, he said that upon initial review, the complaint appears to contain an, an incomplete re- a resuscitation of facts, and we do not agree with the characterization of many of these issues alleged in the complaint. While we know, while we will only be able to give the full response in due time, we will address a few key points below. And they said they've developed the best-in-class technology to ensure compliance. Binance.com is the first global non-U.S. exchange to implement a mandatory KYC program and remains today to have one of the highest standards in KYC and AML. So they're coming out here and they're saying, we have this plan, okay? We have this know-your-customer plan. And they block U.S. users by nationality, okay? and by IP as well, uh, and specifically they say VPN endpoints outside the U.S. So again, utilizing VPNs to get outside of that KYC and those region locks. So they've come out here, and CZ has come out and put out his um, his response right now to the complaint. Now, we will see uh, how this issue gets resolved in the courts, and I think that this is going to be a, a fairly revolutionary case for the crypto industry, because if they lose this case, this case against Binance, one of the largest exchanges in the world, that's going to have a knock-on effect for the crypto market. But if Binance wins the case, then that will restrict the CFTC's ability to go after crypto companies and enforce by regulation like what we've seen the SEC do. Because if you guys remember, the SEC was charging Coinbase uh, in a separate incident. So We've seen these government regulatory bodies go after these exchanges and try and and enforce uh, compliance on them rather than than try to uh, regulate them. Now, that being said, there was one really important bit of information in the filing that they came out with. This is the filing uh, that uh, the CFTC brought up against Binance Holdings. Now, the most important thing about this is you can go and you can read this if you want to go to the summary page. However, when we come down here to number two, very important, okay, we have here, we basically says CZ ha- has... Uh, assisted this. They've solicited and accepted orders, accepted property to margin, and operated the facility for the trading of futures, options, and swaps, and retailed leveraged commodity transactions involving digital assets that are commodities, including Bitcoin, Ether, and Litecoin for persons in the United States. Now, this is very, very important because they've come out here in this filing, and they said specifically that digital assets listed here are commodities. This is so important right here. Digital assets are commodities, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. Now, this is one of the first times, there have been other times, but one of the first and most striking times that I've seen a government body come out with uh, such strong wording when it comes to what's a commodity and what's not a commodity. Now, I would also say that they have to define these as commodities because if they didn't, then they wouldn't have any sort of action that they could take. Because remember, this is the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, all right? It's not the SEC. So, uh, but the CFTC is saying Bitcoin's a commodity, Ethereum is a commodity and Litecoin is a commodity. And the reason why that's important is because they are not securities. That's the whole thing. One of the whole things that the SEC has gone after Coinbase by uh, and and saying that these digital assets are securities or other digital assets are securities. And and thus they 
fall under a different subset of rules, as opposed to Bitcoin being a commodity, which is what I and the community also believe, especially people like Michael Saylor, they believe that Bitcoin is a commodity. And I'd also extend that as far as saying Ether as well. The one surprise to me has always been kind of Litecoin. I didn't realize that Litecoin would also be considered a commodity, but again, they might just be saying that so that way they can bring charges against CZ. But either way, this is indelible proof, just complete... Uh, undeniable proof that these digital assets are commodities. And anybody who says anything different has not seen how the government interprets commodities involving digital assets. This is where I would point them. And I'd say, well, during this complaint, the CFTC says they are actually commodities. And that means they have value. It's not just a security. It's not just a token. It's not just a meme coin. It's a commodity with value. And I think that is very bullish. The fact that they're admitting that and the fact that the um, the authorities are admitting that this is something valuable. Okay? So that's all I've got for you guys today. Let me know what you guys think about this. Do you guys think that the Binance is going to win this case? Now, do you guys think that uh, MicroStrategy buying the dip was a smart move? I mean, it seems like in hindsight... That seems to be a pretty smart move so far, but we'll see how things play out. All right, this is Cody the Corn Raptor, and I hope to catch you guys in the next video.